seven, six, five. Hi guys, and welcome to another Zoo Creates. I'm Tegan, and I have Jessica here with me today, and we are going to be making nature wands today. So the first thing that you'll need to do is go outside and explore and gather some supplies. So here at the zoo, we went for a nature walk and we found some feathers and some little pebbles um, and some different types of leaves and flowers and maybe some pine needles. Um, so we're gonna just use assorted things that we found outside to decorate our wands today. And then, of course, you will need a stick that will be the base of your wand. And then we're gonna use some tape. So we have some duct tape, but whatever tape you have at home should work. And so we'll start by taking that tape and making the outside of our wand sticky. So I'm gonna pull out a little bit and to make it sticky, we have to put the tape on in the reverse way that you would normally think. So we want to fold it and then fold it back on itself so that the sticky part is on the outside. I can get that caught, there we go. And then once you have it caught on the outside, caught on itself, then you can just twist your wand like this and it'll start overlapping. And I wanna cover it about two thirds of the way down. You wanna leave enough room on the bottom so that you can hold on to it because you don't wanna hold on to the sticky part of the tape. So I'm gonna leave about that much just so that I can hold on to it. And then you can use some scissors or I'm just gonna rip my duct tape. But depending on the type of tape you use, you might need some scissors to do that. All right, so I've got the outside of my wand is covered in this sticky tape. And then I'm just gonna start adding some decorations to my wand. What are some of your favorite places to go on a nature walk, Tegan? Ooh, I really like to go um, to Ledges State Park. That's one of my favorite places. Um, I also like to, um, to go to Ada Hayden in Ames, because I live in Ames, and there's a nice little pond or a lake there, because uh, I really like to see, see the water and all of the wildlife that likes to live by the water. Where do you like to go, Jessica? I really like to take my kids for walks. Um, right where I live, I live up in Ankeny, and where I live in Ankeny, there is a really fun little um, path that we take through um, a bunch of trees. So it's almost like we're going into a wooded area, and it's really yes. while it's right behind a set of houses, it's actually really hard to see the houses. So it Very makes cool. us feel like we're completely out of the city. Um, we also really like to go over to Sailorville and walk mm -hmm. around right by the dam. There's a whole bunch of fun areas to walk right along the dam and the river. So yeah. And then we also just like to explore in our backyard as well. Right. Yeah, I like going in the wooded areas, especially this time of year. Um, there's mushrooms that are starting to grow. So I like to go mushroom hunting sometimes. Or sometimes I like to go bird watching, see what different birds I can identify. Now, when we're out and on our nature walk, is this something where do we have to bring the supplies home with us or can we prep our stick and take it out and decorate as we're walking along? That's actually a really great idea. I think that you could, you could prepare your um, stick ahead of time because usually it's pretty easy to find a stick close to home mm -hmm. even if you don't live in a nature area. Um, and then, yeah, then as you walk, you could start filling, filling your wand with decorations. And if you can't find any sticks, another thing you could do is just make a bracelet instead. And so you could wrap the um, tape backwards around your wrist. And then as you're right. walking, you could 
you could make a bracelet. That's not going to last as long as these wands would, but they'd right. still be fun to make. Yeah, and that would be a little bit easier because I'm. I've seen some people they make like um, bracelets out of flowers mm -hmm. and they weave them together, but that would be a lot easier than doing that. Yeah. All right. I think I've covered up almost every part of my stick. Yeah. So you do. You really want to cover it so that it doesn't get. Um, covered in things like dirt or mm, something yeah. like that that aren't as cool as your your pieces of nature. All right. Well, while you're finishing okay, yours, cool. I think I'll get our animal friend out. There's my nature wand. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah, so I've even got some bark here that I'm using. And I've got a couple of the pebbles on there. If you do choose to use some rocks, you're definitely gonna wanna find the smaller ones or even you know the flatter ones. Because um, if it gets too heavy, sometimes our tape isn't strong enough to hold on um, a rock, because rocks can get really heavy. And they'll stick out a little bit further. So you want everything to be as flat as possible on there. And one thing, we put flowers on our wands. And one thing when you're using flowers is you want to make sure when you're out walking around that you're not picking flowers from someone's yard. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. That might make someone upset if you picked their pretty flowers that they planted. Yeah. So it's always good. Dan people usually don't mind if you're picking dandelions out of their yard. Or we also mm -hmm. found some creeping Charlie here at the zoo that mm -hmm. we usually people don't mind when you pick those kinds of flowers. But you definitely don't want to walk up to someone's nice pretty flower garden yeah. that they've been working hard on. Yeah, and my creeping Charlie, I can actually, I can smell it. So creeping Charlie is actually in the mint family, I believe. And so it's very fragrant. And I kind of like the smell. I think some people don't prefer the smell. <laughs> they don't really like it, but I love the smell of Creeping Charlie. And right now, at this time in the spring, it's got nice purple flowers that look great. <gasps> Ooh, who do we have, Jessica? So I brought Miguel with me today, and he is a guinea pig. And <laughs> he's kind of, he's not really sure about this. We'll keep him nice and close so he's nice and comfy. Now, guinea pigs are what we call a domestic animal. And so what that means is that he needs people to take care of him. So just like our dogs and cats at home, our pets at home, he would be considered a pet. And so out in the wild, they actually come from South America. Um, and then they, are, they were domesticated. And now um, a lot of people in South America, they domesticated them for food. Um, but up here in the United States, we, use, we, we keep them as pets. So we think that they're really cute and they're really fun to play with. He is a rodent, so he's related to um, mice and rats, porcupines, um, all sorts of critters like that. And what's um, really cool about rodents is that they have these two really big front teeth called incisors. We have them too. There are two big front teeth in the front of our mouth. Um, and what's special about rodent incisors is they never stop growing. They grow and grow and grow. And so how do you think he has, what do you think he has to do to make sure his teeth don't grow too big? Uh, does he go get them trimmed like a haircut? Mm, I, if, it, if it gets to the point um, where they're too long, he could go to the vet and the vet could trim them if he's, a, if he's a pet. But if he's out in the wild, if he's a wild rodent, he has to chew. He has to chew and chew and chew. And so um, for our pets too, like um, pet guinea pigs, we give them hay. Hay is what they eat and as they chew on their hay, they're gonna wear their teeth down. Other things that we give them here at the zoo to chew on, um, we give them cardboard. Um, they have some uh, special pellets that they can chew on. They get to chew on sticks or wood blocks. 
So we give them a lot of different things that they can chew on to keep those teeth short. And then the, um, the guinea pigs out in the wild or other rodents out in the wild, they would just chew on a lot of food. They'd be chewing on all sorts of things. Um, animals that are very similar to rodents, but they're not rodents, are rabbits. So rabbits have to do the same thing. Rabbits aren't rodents, they're called lagomorphs. They're a different family, but they have the ever-growing incisors too. So they have to chew on a lot of things. So that's why if you have a pet rabbit, you have to give them plenty of things to chew on. Uh, Miguel here lives with his brother Dante, and besides hay and his rodent pellets, he also really likes to eat lettuce and other produce like carrots and sweet potato and cucumbers and peppers. Those are some of their favorite things to eat. And occasionally even he'll get some, <laughs> he'll get some sweets to eat too, like some fruits. Fruits are kind of like candy to, to animals. They're really sweet and sugary. As you can see, guinea pigs, they're a prey animal. So being out in the open like this makes them a little nervous. So that's why I'm trying to cover him up. And so if you have a guinea pig pet at home, you wanna make sure you provide them something that's called a hide. Do you know what a hide would be? Uh, somewhere that you hide. Exactly, <laughs> they would want to be in a hide. And so you can give them a cardboard box to hide in, or you can even buy them like a plastic hide from the store, it's just some sort of thing that has an opening and then is enclosed in the back. So that way they feel nice and safe. Another thing that you need to make sure you do if you're thinking about getting a guinea pig for a pet, we always encourage everybody to do their research because sometimes you might think you want some, an animal as a pet, but they actually may not be the right pet for you. And so um, I always wanted a guinea pig when I was little, but my brother was severely allergic to guinea pigs. And so some people are really allergic to guinea pigs. So that's always something that you wanna get tested before you get a pet. And of course, we always encourage people to look at adopting. So going to our friends at the ARL and adopting through, um, through them is a really excellent way. All right, do you, can you think of any other questions about Miguel? Where does he hide in the wild? In the wild, he would probably dig like a little burrow or he'd find some rocks to hide in um, out in the wild. And so he'd look for all of those little nooks and crannies or maybe a log to hide in, very similar to <coughs> our rabbits or squirrels and all those animals around here. That's kind of the same places that they would hide. Does he have whiskers? It looks like I can see some whiskers. He does. Let's see if I can turn him so the camera can see him too. He has whiskers. He's got really long eyelashes and he's got whiskers around his nose and towards the back of his face. And those whiskers help him feel his way around. And so if he's, if he's in the dark and he can't see very well, those whiskers stick out and they're very, very sensitive. And so they help him feel his way around and feel his surroundings to help him see a little bit. He can kind of see by feeling that, that way. You can see he's got some long claws on him, so he does enjoy digging every once in a while. And that, like I said, out in the wild, they would probably dig little burrows to live in. And he's got short little ears, to, so that way when he goes underground, he's not getting a bunch of dirt. His ears actually kind of fold over a little bit, so that way they protect and keep the insides of his ears nice and clean. Very cool. Does he like to be awake during the daytime or the nighttime? You know, I think he is a little bit of both. <laughs> He's a, um, most guinea pigs, I think, are gonna be more active during the daytime or maybe in those morning, evening hours. Um, and then, um, less active at nighttime. But you know, anytime I go in to see Miguel and Dante, they're kind of, they're, they're pretty much active whenever, when, they see, when they see people. They really like people. Do they like to play with any toys? I think here at the zoo, we give them all sorts of toys to play with. It's mostly gonna be stuff that they can chew on because since they like to chew so much, we wanna make sure that they're not getting something that could hurt them if they were to chew on it. So they get a lot of um, cardboard boxes and one of my favorite things to do is to take an empty toilet paper roll and I cut it into slits and then we'll weave it together so it almost makes a little woven ball and we'll stick their food inside of those balls and then they have to move it around and play with it to get the food out. That's a really fun toy for them. Cool. Is he really fast? He is pretty fast. He can move pretty quickly. So when we go into his enclosure, if we surprise him, he'll dart really quickly. So he can move pretty fast. I'd say if you get a guinea pig at, for um, a pet at home, you're definitely gonna wanna make sure that if you take them out of their enclosures to play with them, that you set up a playpen so that way you can catch them because they could get into some trouble otherwise. Oh yeah. All right. Well, thank you yeah, um, thank for you showing for us how to make these lovely nature wands. And thank you, Miguel, for being such a good boy and hanging out with us. 
We look forward to seeing everybody on our next Zoo Creates. Please do share pictures of your nature wand once you get it created because we'd love to see where you went on your nature walk. Awesome. Bye. Bye.